my initial interest with using sound field mics related to the capture of impulse responses. We were recording audio from within cabins using rally cars, touring cars, basically as many different shells that we could get that we could author impulse responses, either by stereo or in surround or ambisonics. So we're basically playing a high output um, emitter, which would be a, a sine wave sweep. And obviously we'd be able to author deconvolve uh, using that uh, in something like acoustic mirror or, or waves IR or whatever. So the Ambio for me, or I regard the Ambio and, and sound, I was looking at sound field mics as a tool for capturing 360 degree audio, but being able to pull in everything within an environment or an environ, or even it's for Foley um, design. It's, it's a great way to record props, you know, car parts, whatever it is, could be particulate, anything externally in an outside location that would be representative something you know that would be within say a rally stage or, or on track so you, you're capturing a subject that's breathing in its own environment so that when you drop those assets into the game you don't have to worry too much about processing that with reverb or whatever you, you you know you can have a little bit of a tail end decay on it but it's breathing so it's world eyes and it beds in you know it glues itself in within the environment and it sounds a lot more natural than recording something very starchy and anodyne and bland you know, in a Foley studio with a dry mic, it's, it's not realistic enough. What I have done in the past is I'll do a multi-mic array so that I've got, uh, you know, uh, a session that I can lay out of a multi-track recording, say it was a carbon fiber a breaking, you know, destruction session or whatever, or a body part impact session or a glass particulate session, Wh whatever it was, whatever assets that we need, my approach is to record it within, you know, an ambient environment, but have near field, you know, close miking to capture the punch of the transients, and then I can blend to taste whatever it is that I'm, I'm capturing. Um, I mean, there are just so many, you know, areas uh, or systems that, that we can employ, you know, the Ambio recordings, even if they're folded down, it's, it's the ability to capture maybe reflections within an environment or even re recording in ambisonic format for passbys that we could utilize for a trailer, or we might even be able to utilize, you know, uh, binaurally at some, at some juncture. So we're, we're kind of future-proofing, you know, uh, our, our library and an archive. The Ambio microphone since, um, I'd say, better part of six, seven months, I've been using that uh, at all of the onboard sound recording sessions I've done for, for Dirt and for this unannounced motorsports title we have currently in development. A, because it's the, the most effective way to capture transmission in the car and anything that's incidental. A lot of the venues are recorded at, they have gravel, tarmac, and when, when a car that's been stripped out you know, is, is going over tarmac and, and gravel, you get little tinks, little particulate kick up. And it's, it's a very high frequency sound, but stuff like that, that might be just incidental to what you're doing on an on-track recording session. But here and there, you've got these little intervals where you hear this sound. We're, we're thinking about object-based audio. It's always like 7.1 or Ambia. That's, that's, that's the high end ordering of where the playback format we're, we're, we're looking at. So everything can be folded down to there. But within that matrix, we can at output preserve the higher order ambisonic, so it's in the signal. But we're not we're not creating bespoke binaural audio for a VR game. We, we, we're not pushing VR at this juncture. I mean, the only VR game that we have published to date was Dirt Rally 2. As far as being able to use first order ambisonics, that it's great for recording, you know, a, a spherical kind of ambience. You know, in a in a rally car, you're going through so many different types of land, you know, landscapes, lots of different environs. We had a field recording trip with myself and uh, Alexis. We just went to um, uh, Batsford Arboretum and we just recorded trees, bird songs, rivers, lakes, streams, anything like that. But I've used it for quite a few other things as well. We, we used it for some prop recording. A lot of the circuits have very large jumps. So the sound of a car bottoming out, it's a very specific sound. You hear a lot of, a lot of you know, rally stages as well. If there's a big crest and the car's coming down, it's like this skimming kind of <laughs> So recording a sump guard from a Tommy Mackinnon um, Lancer Evo 6 that uh, was loaned to us um, by SVP Motorsports was quite useful. So we recorded that with the Ambio. And then I think I, I had like a, uh, a DPA 4011 uh, just to capture the transient. With that blended with the, you know, the deep, some of the detail just to capture a little bit of bite, just, just to kind of tuck it un, under there is really useful. I mean, that's where the Ambio, again, you know, just, just, just helps. It's just a really useful tool and for crowds, Crowds in um, stadia, the smaller bleachers that you get in, in rally cross events. Taking the amb Ambio to like, I mean, Chel Cheltenham FC, they have, they have a really small stadium there, but it's perfect. Um, you know, to sit in the midst of that and just hear the rise and fall and swells from those crowds is great. I've even, 
I mean, I've had recordings of guys spot welding, you know, in situ at the MSA British Rally Cross uh, heats at Silverstone. So to be able to, to jump into the midst of that with an Ambio is brilliant. Before Ambio, it was more of a case of, of recording stereo, you know, ambiences, field recordings. If there are emitters within an environment, um, um, it, it might be something specific, it might be a PA speaker in a tannoy system or something like that, or it could be, you know, a blimp. It's good to have, you know, uh, more spatial recordings and more breadth in terms of the 360 degree dimension. Where we're coming from with Dirt Rally, um, I want it to be as immersive as possible. We have a number of guys who assist with the, the physics team um, and the handling guys. You know, we'll have seats with, with manufacturers or teams and they're coming in and they're feeding back and telling us what they like about the game. And it's not just limited to how the car's handling and operating, you know, in the game. They're, they're actually picking up on sound. So capturing that and nailing it and putting that in context, you know, within a car or any other car for that matter that exhibits a specific sound, you know, there's nothing like it. One of our Sponsor partners, um, we're happy to say, is, uh, is Zoom, Zoom Labs Japan. I've used, in the years, we've used a, a number of, of multi-channel um, uh, hard disk you know, recorders and solid state recorders, and they're great. Um, uh, sound devices, can't up, but they're a little bit over-engineered and they're incredibly weighty. And the new generation of Zoom recorders, the F8 and the F4 series, they've got great preamps. You know, being able to attenuate um, you know, the low frequencies, a bit of high pass filtering, be able to, to dial it in or dime it. I kind of jury rigged them with attenuators. That's the important thing for recording onboard engine audio. But the important thing for obviously with use for Sennheiser is support for, for real time monitoring um, with the Ambio uh, mic. So the firmware now on, on the F8 and the F4 series is, is geared up so I can have whatever, however I orient the mic, whatever it is, Enfire whatever I'm recording, I can monitor with, with earbuds in real time. And it's just great to be able to, to position the mic or the mic to the sweet spot. You know, I want to get as close to the driver's position as possible, but also I, I want to make sure that I'm picking up the transmission line, wherever that may be. The Ambio is just, it, you know, from God knows, I mean, 30, 30, yeah, about 30 odd recordings I think we've done so far in, in, inside of the year. It's just been consistently good. And I haven't had to worry about, um, one of my concerns was obviously because of the, the sheer power of some of these cars internally, they're incredibly noisy to such an extent where you have to have comms to be able to communicate with the driver. I haven't had to put any inline attenuators, but on the on the engine exhaust recordings, I just, I, I used, you know, 20 dB pads, but now I'm, I'm kind of upping it to 40 because a lot of the cars that I'm doing for this unannounced motorsports title are incredibly loud. As I say, it's, it's a powerful tool because you're just pulling everything with a 360 degree environment, but uh, it's great for ambiences. It's great for for maybe fixed uh, spot emitters, um, you know, within that environment. But it depends on the type of game, that, you know, that, that you're designing and that you're, you're you know you're designing audio for. You know, our cars are just drowning everything out. You know, you might just be kind of approaching a you know a, a rally stage and, and driving out or going into the pits or whatever it is, or there might be a preamble to an event. So there are opportunities where you can use that. But I think it's it's. Um, you know, it can, it can be useful. It's just knowing where you can use it, where people are actually going to notice it, you know. Um, and if you use it judiciously, then, you know, you, you benefit from it. As I said, it's, I just think it's a fantastic tool for just capturing, you know, a breadth and scope of audio. We don't need multi mics. You just have that in your backpack and maybe a, a little, you know, shotgun for, you know, depending on what it is you're recording, but roving around, I just have those two on the fly. And just, um, yeah. <laughs> just bring back the goods.